Hey everybody, it's Craig with Smartphone Emmy. We got a great face off for you today between T Mobile's Samsung Nexus S and ATT's Atrix 4G. Don't forget, stop by smartphoneemmy.com. Check out my winner of today's face off, one with written review. I also have some photos and videos posted from both of today's contestants. All right, let's kick off our face off. T Mobile's Samsung Nexus S. Quad band GSM, tri band 3G, no 4G connectivity, weighs in at 129 grams. It's the lighter of the two today. As far as build quality, you've got Gorilla Glass over the display. You've got a high grade plastic rim that encompasses the entire display itself. Take a look at it from the side. You've actually got a curved display, which is very slick. Battery cover, again, is in a nice high gloss black. Only issue is big time fingerprint magnet. So you pull this off, take a look underneath the battery cover, and you can see we've got a 1500 milliamp hour battery rated at 6 hours and 40 minutes of talk time on 3G. SIM card slot, no micro SD card support in the Nexus S. Battery cover itself is made out of a rubberized plastic. Put that back on. Upper right hand corner is the phone, phone speaker. Next to that's the LED flash and the 5 megapixel camera. Got nothing up on top. On the right hand side is the power and lock key. On the bottom is a 3.5mm headphone jack along with the microphone and micro USB port. And on the left hand side is the volume rocker. All right, AT&T's Motorola Atrix 4G, quad band GSM as well. Also, tri band 3G offers what AT&T calls their 4G connectivity, HSPA Plus. Weighs in at 135 grams, so it's the heavier of the two. As far as build quality, again, you've got Gorilla Glass over the display. Case itself, the phone case itself is actually made out of metal, which is a step up from uh, high grade plastic, which is kind of nice. You can see it and feel it on both sides of the phone. Battery, 1930 milliamp hour battery rated at 9 hours of talk time on 3G. I think that's the biggest one out there on a smartphone right now. SIM card slot, micro SD card slot, micro SD cards are hot swappable on the Atrix 4G. Lower left hand corner, you've got the phone speaker. Above that is the dual LED flash and camera. Up near the top is the fingerprint reader, which also acts as the power and lock key. All the way on top is 3.5mm headphone jack. On the right hand side is the volume rocker up and down. Nothing on the bottom. And the left hand side HDMI port as well as the micro USB port. All right, both of the phones offer 5 megapixel cameras. On the Nexus S, you get autofocus LED flash along with geotagging. Video capture is WVGA at 30 frames per second. On the Atrix 4G, you get autofocus, dual LED flash geotagging, along with, along with image stabilization and a big bump up in video capture, 720p HD at 30 frames per second. All right, let's take a look at the displays on both. Come on. There we go. I guess it helps if you actually push it down, huh? All right. On the Nexus S, you've got a 4-inch Super AMOLED capacitive touch display showing 480 by 800 pixels that offers a fingerprint resistive coating over the display which works pretty well it's got an accelerometer sensor proximity sensor multi-touch as well as a three-axis gyro sensor upper right hand corner front facing camera for video calls below the display you've got four touch sensitive keys typical android but in a different order far left back key main menu key search key and home key on the atrix 4g You've got a 4-inch QHD capacitive touch display showing 540 by 960 pixels. Also offers an accelerometer sensor, proximity sensor, as well as multi-touch. Upper left-hand corner front-facing camera for video calls. Below the screen a display, again, four touch sensitive keys. This time, main menu key, home key, back key, and search key. Memory on the Nexus S offers 16 gigabytes of internal storage. There is no expanding of internal storage through the use of a micro SD card and has 512 megabytes of RAM. Atrix 4G, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, one gigabyte of RAM, which I think is the most in a smartphone currently, although the Galaxy S2 will come out with the same one gigabyte of RAM. Plus internal storage can be increased an additional 32 gigabytes through the use of a micro SD card. Both of the phones offer Wi-Fi 802.11. BGNN with support for DLNA. The Atrix 4G also has HDMI out. Both of the phones offer Bluetooth 2.1 with support for A2DP. GPS with support for AGPS. They both can be used as Wi-Fi hotspots. The Nexus S runs on the ARM Cortex A8 1 GHz Hummingbird processor from Samsung. Atrix 4G runs on NVIDIA's Tegra 2 dual core 1 GHz processor. Operating system on the Nexus S top of the line Android 2.3 Gingerbread. On the Atrix 4G, it's Android 2.2 Froil, and it also has Motorola's Moto Blur UI overlay. All right, it's time to run our Quadra Center benchmark test on our two contestants. 
Nexus S and Atrix 4G. Let's kick that off. Off to a good clean start. Nexus S offers the ARM Cortex A8 1 GHz Hummingbird processor with 512 megabytes of RAM, while the Atrix 4G offers NVIDIA's Tegra 2 1 GHz processor with 1 gigabyte of RAM. So we would expect the Atrix 4G to come back with a much better, much better benchmark score than the Nexus S, but of course we'll also run our unofficial speed test to see what how these work in the real world. And we're in the 3D graphics on the Atrix 4G. We just kicked in the 3D graphics on the Nexus S. Gives you a good look at the quality of displays as well. Again, you've got the Super AMOLED on the left with the QHD display on the right. You've got your frames per second and frame rate also in the lower left-hand corner of each display. And the final test on the Atrix 4G. All right. And when do we come back with? Atrix 4G 2671. And on the Nexus S, 1651. So our Quadrant benchmark winner is the Atrix 4G, which was expected. However, you can see the Nexus S, top of the pile for its uh, class there. Okay, what do you say we run our unofficial speed test? I think we need to do it since the Nexus S got its ass whooped with the uh, Quadrant Standard Benchmark test. So I've downloaded uh, Advanced Task Killer on both. So let's kill all the tasks. And then let's go back here and we'll launch everything from here. Let's start out with Gmail. That looked to be the Nexus S. And back to the home page. Let's try uh, messaging. That looked to be, I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to tell on that one. I'll let you call that. Let's try the gallery real quick. And that was definitely the Atrix 4G. Let's go up and try the calendar. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Yeah. All right, let's try it this way. That was the Atrix 4G. Let's try maps. That was pretty close to a tie, I think. Um, let's try the market. Atrix 4G, but I don't think by much. And again, if I'm missing one, let me know. Camera. Yep. I think that was the Atrix 4G. Again, hard for me to tell. And then let's try movies. Third party app. That was definitely the Nexus S. And then let's play the video so you can bring that up quicker. And that was also the Nexus S. Not by much, but it was ahead. So in real world time, Nexus S did a pretty good job of keeping up with the Atrix 4G when we weren't talking about doing any real heavy lifting. And we'll look at some heavy lifting during our browser comparison. All right, let's run our navigation comparison. I'll try and kick the contestants off at the same time. Navigate to Corner Bakery. Southwest on Lansburn Circle toward Coffin Way, then turn left onto Coffin Way. Oh, I didn't hear the <coughs> excuse me, voice. Turn left onto there we go. Way, then turn left onto La Venta Road. All right, we got the voice guided turn by turn navigation work quite well on both. The Atrix 4G seemed to get there. Uh, a bit quicker as far as grabbing the GPS and hanging on to it long enough to get the voice guided turn by turn navigation to work. Uh, but both seem to handle it quite well as far as maps are concerned and redrawing. Pinch to zoom. There we go. That's pretty slick. Try zooming out. Doesn't seem to have too much of a problem redrawing, scrolling. Very smooth. 
try the Nexus S. Again, no problem zooming in. Zoom out. A little longer to redraw, but not much. Scroll smoothly. Doesn't seem to redraw quite as quick as the Atrix 4G or scroll quite as smoothly, but very, very close. So let's look at the navigation comparison. And both phones doing very, very well with voice guided turn by turn navigation. All right, so on our YouTube comparison, I've got both of the handsets running off the same Wi Fi network. They're both set to default to play in HQ. What we're looking for, I've got the volume turned up on the Nexus S and I've got it turned off on the Atrix 4G. So we're going to first listen to the Nexus S and see who spools it up quicker as well. And that was the Atrix 4G and we're listening to the Nexus S. Now let's do the same thing again and this time let's listen to the Atrix 4G and we'll kill the volume on the Nexus S. And they're both set to default in HQ so let's give you a look at the uh, playback quality as well. And we're off. Alright, now let's just try one more just to see who gets there quick and I think it's important we all see a dead alien and we're off. All right, that one looked like a dead heat, so let's try one more. We'll try the dark side on both. And we're off. What's happening, guys? Just, I hope I said that right. It's a little shout-out to everyone in Poland who watches Equals 3. Anyway, there's this video floating around of Lady Gaga busting her ass pretty hard at a concert. All right, so basically, I'll let you guys be the judge of playback quality. Again, they're both set at HQ. It's whether you prefer the Super AMOLED versus the uh, QHD display. As far as loading the videos, the Atrix won two out of three uh, as far as speed and loading. And again, they're both running off the same Wi-Fi network.